My next patron question is from The Ocean Hunter, who wanted me to compare two movies centered on a similar subject. With the topic of abortion having been a thing as of late in America, I found two movies, Never Rarely, Sometimes Always, and Bella, which both center around a woman dealing with an unexpected pregnancy. In each case, these women encounter a friend to help them navigate through their time of need as they consider terminating the pregnancy. Never Rarely, Sometimes Always has the woman ultimately going through the abortion procedure, whereas in Bella, she does not have an abortion and ultimately gives birth to her child. As a result of the outcomes, these films have earned praise from both the pro-choice and the pro-life sides of the issue, respectively. Now, I'm sure that both of us could agree that abortion is one of the more divisive issues in the political arena. So regardless of where you personally stand on the subject, which did you find was the better movie, simply based on its own merits? I think there is an expectation when you watch a movie focused on abortion that the filmmaker is going to lecture the audience and force their stance on it. The interesting thing I found with both of these films is that they try to present the events in a more realistic manner and don't come across as trying to force the audience to think a certain way. Despite the different outcomes for the characters, both do feel like they align with pro-choice values. Because that's what pro-choice means. It's letting the person who's pregnant make the decision for themselves whether they feel comfortable having a baby or not and allowing them the access to the side, rather than merely removing the option entirely. But of these two movies, which do I prefer? I'm going to say, never rarely, sometimes always. What the film does exceptionally well is it creates the needed and immediate sympathy for the lead character Autumn. Director Eliza Hitman makes sure we see the various emotions running through her head as she processes this sudden pregnancy. A large amount of the film involves Autumn and her cousin Skylar going to New York to try and have this abortion. We get to know them over the course of the film, and the situations they get into feel realistic. It's wonderful seeing the support Skylar shows for her cousin, although there is also a point when they have a bit of a disagreement. The filmmakers don't treat it as some big event that destroys that friendship. The doctor's office scenes are especially well done, as Hitman captures that environment right down to the sounds. Never rarely, sometimes always, does such a great job of using the situations and the characters' actions more than dialogue to move the story forward and getting the main characters to their desired destination. The two lead actresses, Sidney Flanagan and Talia Ryder, especially deserve praise for their performances, which allow us to further understand their characters and come across as subtle and natural. I actually think Never Rarely, Sometimes Always should be watched by any teenager who finds themselves dealing with an unwanted pregnancy, as it is sympathetic towards them and shows there is a support system out there for them. Bella also works primarily because of the interactions between the two main characters. I think any good movie is able to get you invested in the lives of people you just met, and Bella is able to do that. From when we're first introduced to the waitress Nina and the former athlete turned chef Jose, there's an intrigue in learning more about them. In Jose's case, there are hints that something tragic happened that led to his current circumstance, and the film is able to keep you interested until it's revealed. Most of the movies just Nina and Jose hanging out and talking, and much like Never Rarely, Sometimes Always, is filmed in a realistic style. When Nina talks about why she wants to have an abortion, her reasons are completely logical and understandable. Even though Jose thinks it would be better if she had the baby, Nina is not demonized for her views and stance. The movie is apparently highly regarded by anti-abortion groups, primarily because Nina does have the baby in the end and gives it to Jose to adopt. However, if the movie had ended with Nina having the abortion, you would barely have to change anything preceding the epilogue. Even though the filmmakers and even the lead actor identify as pro-life, they also said they did not want to make a movie that judged a pregnant woman for her decisions, and I think they were able to do that. In fact, it wasn't until after I watched Bella and read a few interviews that I found out the exact stance of the filmmakers. Now let me know in the comments whether you prefer Never Rarely, Sometimes Always, or Bella, and thanks for your question, Ocean Hunter.